What is up everybody? It is the Whizzler, and today I am coming to you with part two of another 101 series for Nick Fury. We're going to talk about his life model decoy. So, you guys may have remembered that in the first Nick Fury series, I explained a lot about why I believe that champion is such a great champion, even unawakened, and I absolutely believe that. Um, a lot of people have messaged me and um, countered that, so I want to share why some people agree or support his awakened ability and why it's needed um, so much. There is a recent Alliance War video that I'm going to share um, kind of showcasing what his abilities can do and when the life model decoy kicks in or the opposite of it. So let's review what that is. So his signature ability, life model decoy, it is a passive ability. When Nick would be knocked out, his life model decoy is destroyed and he returns to the fight with a permanent Fury's Fury buff and stun immunity. However, Nick loses his infinity formula and begins degenerating 2.23%, that is at max signature level, of his health per second for the rest of the quest while above 30% max health. The destruction of Nick's decoy removes all effects and isn't affected by ability accuracy reduction. So what does this mean? I mentioned earlier that it was kind of like an extra life, and in essence it is, but it's also like a huge power boost with additional enhancements. So for starters, you're stun immune. The rest of the fight, if you are at this level, you are completely stun immune against any of these opponents. There are some caveats. You can't stay above 30% health. Even if you regenerate above 30% health, you will begin to degenerate it. It also will remove any effects. So if you have any kind of debuffs on you, um, bleed, poison, or, or probably the more common ones, but there are several in the game now that it will remove. It will remove all of them. Any effect that he has. But you're going to regen to 100% real quick, and then you're going to degen a little bit slower. So, in this video, I'm going to show you an Alliance War boss. Um, we are in uh, Tier 1, so we were facing an Invisible Woman who I've not faced before in Alliance War, uh, let alone as the boss. So, I spent a great deal of time dueling uh, beforehand and as you see in this video I made a lot of mistakes so I want to showcase what I did wrong as well as uh, what I would do differently if I was to face her again next time. So let's talk about why I chose Nick Fury as my attacker for this Alliance War. I brought him in specifically for the Alliance War boss. Um, there's a couple of key reasons why he may be the best counter for Invisible Woman in the game currently. Um, one of the reasons why is with his tactical charges, he cannot miss after he gets five. And Invisible Woman has a miss mechanic built into her invisibility. So once you have five or more tactical charges, that is completely off the table for her. And she also has a weakness to bleed. So if she is bled or bleeding, her invisibility never pauses. There's another thing that she does that can be rather challenging to deal with, and that is the debuff uh, that she applies to her opponents, the vulnerability debuff. Uh, we saw it with uh, Stealth Suit Spider-Man as well, and it is uh, a bit challenging to keep up with because it increases her critical damage rating and it reduces your block proficiency. If you miss or make one mistake, you can be you can be done very quickly against Invisible Woman. So, at ten tactical charges, you purify all effects, all non-damaging debuffs, before he goes into Life Model Decoy. So keep that in mind. You just need ten to get around that mechanic. And if you're in the Life Model Decoy phase, all the damaging debuffs that you receive. So it doesn't matter if it's that particular one or any of the other ones. So another huge win. Um, the last one is um, 15 or more. He becomes unblockable. It's really difficult to hit the Invisible Woman when she has her force field up. It takes, I think, 90% of incoming damage, so it's really hard to do damage to the Invisible Woman. Never mind when her health pool is through the roof, you know, plus 700% HP. It is insanely difficult, but we're going to go to the video here. And I want to show you what this can look like and where it can go really bad and then where it can go really good. 
So let's take a look. Alright, so to get started, I'm fully boosted for this, but do not have any suicides on. I also have the Resonate Mastery on. Um, it's just left over from earlier fights, and I didn't take it off. So as you can see here, I'm trying to apply the internal bleed, and it's not going super well. Every duel before this, I was able to effectively get the internal bleed up, but I completely failed. She was not letting me do it, and I made a mistake earlier. You may have seen I only dashed in one medium and then dashed it back, and that broke my rhythm completely, so now she went down to zero bleeds. And here, I'm just baiting her special and backing up, making sure she doesn't get too high. And I was getting very frustrated. And the reason I was getting frustrated is because the internal bleed was not up, and at this point in every duel that I had done, it was already up and I was into a decreasing 20 tactical charges plus, so I had a um, pre-life model decoy Fury's Fury up, but I obviously don't have that yet. So I let her hit me with the uh, SP1, and it didn't knock me out, and that's because I had the Resonate Mastery up, and it weakened her. It was very frustrating. So at this point, I'm still in the original phase. I'm still in phase one. So I said, now's the time. I'm just going to let her build up my power and get close to a SP2. And this is where my frustration built even further. So this is where I started to make other mistakes. Um, I went to an SP2, and I did not want to do that. I wanted to maintain right before then and hit an SP1 to get eight tactical charges. So now I had to slow the fight down even further. And as you can see, I only have a minute left. And she's still at 68% damage, or health, excuse me. So here we go. I got my first SP1 off in the real Nick Fury form. So I have eight tactical charges, but I'm not getting any extra extension on the bleed, so I'm a little worried. But this is where the true power of Nick Fury comes in, because I'm almost at another one. And you're going to see here, I'm going to bait her SP2 out. And once I do that, the fight is going to change very quickly. All right, so now... Launch my SP-1. I have 16 tactical charges. I'm completely unblockable at this point. The fight has 20 seconds left. 25 seconds left. Look at this damage. And after this combo, the fight's over. Absolutely insane. So, do you want to awaken Nick Fury? Absolutely you want to awaken Nick Fury if you can. If you don't have the ability to awaken him, should you still use him? Yes! He is absolutely amazing. His life model decoy capability with the extra life functionality is awesome. Um, so just to kind of recap a couple of the wins that allowed me to one-shot the Invisible Woman boss... Um, as well as some of the mistakes that I made. So the first and foremost mistake uh, that I made was not being able to get the internal bleed up, and I put a lot of attention into that in the early stages of the fight. So I probably wasted about a minute and a half focusing on that one aspect of Nick Fury, and I was not able to complete combos because that was what I was doing. So I wasn't doing any damage to her whatsoever. Because remember, his real damage comes after that light ending 5-hit combo. That's where the true bleeds come in. Granted, they would have been a lot better had I had the internal uh, bleed up and was able to build up my tactical charges to lengthen the duration of that bleed. So that was mistake number one. Mistake number two was still having the Resonate Mastery on. I should have removed that completely. While it's helpful in some certain scenarios, in this particular circumstance it actually hurt me because... I didn't go into the second phase of Nick Fury, the real version of him, until a minute left into the fight. And that's not a lot of time, but the wins are, you don't need a lot of time with Nick Fury. He absolutely destroyed her in 30 seconds. So had I gone into phase 2 immediately and just let her kill me off quickly, that is what I would have done differently going into this boss fight again. Uh, because I could have ended it in less than a minute, probably 45 seconds. And that's the strength of Nick Fury. He is completely amazing if you know how to use him and when to use him. Is he going to be the boss killer for every Alliance War? No. 
is he going to be for a lot of them? <laughs> yes, he is that good. Evade champs, not a problem. Debuff champs, voids, not too much of a problem. Now you've got to get to 10 tactical charges for that to be uh, shrugged off. So keep that in mind, you got to knock down the opponent too. So that one's a little bit trickier, but he can do it. Once he goes unblockable, he's a boss killer though. So, thank you guys very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this uh, part two series of Nick Fury. If you have any questions, comments, please go ahead and put them below. Hit that like button. It helps me out. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Also, if you're interested in seeing some specific champs, older, newer, uh, I would love to know what you guys want to learn. And uh, see you next time.